Hello guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to the Tactic YouTube channel. AMD just officially launched their RX 470 series of graphics cards, their even more affordable take on gaming, and this time right off the bat I was greeted with an aftermarket model, that one as you can see being from Sapphire and their brand new Nitro Plus series. As you can notice, the product box is basically the same compared to the RX 480 Nitro Plus model, which I reviewed not so long ago. On the front, you can see the model name and its video memory size, some mention of the main features like the new 14 nanometer FinFET manufacturing process. While on the right side of the box, we have some talk about the system requirements, and on the back, a bit more detailed look into the series features, as well as a small picture of the graphics card. Opening up the box, here we have some user manuals, promotional material, optical disc with drivers and software, and that's about it for the bundle. And here is the graphics card itself. Taking a close look at the card, you can see that Sapphire basically transferred and used the same Nitro Plus cooler as seen on the RX 480, almost to the last detail. Bottom line, what they did here is just slapped a different GPU onto their custom PCB and cooler design, which was used in their higher tier series and which incorporates improved four-phase power design and other components like the black diamond chokes. This way, the two 95mm dual X fans and the big aluminium block with three copper heat pipes will have to handle less overall load which is in my opinion a big plus since the card will run cooler and quieter, especially since the RX 470 GPU has lower TDP of around 120 watts. Since I'm already talking about it, the RX 470 GPU, codenamed Elsmir, comes in with 2048 shaders, 256 less compared to the RX 480, which is not that big of a difference at first sight. The reference default base and boost GPU clock speed run at 926 and 1206 MHz, while the Nitro Plus model of course comes in a factory overclocked at 1260 MHz, that being both its base and boost clock speeds. Clock speed of the GDDR5 video memory is set at 1650 MHz for the reference model or 1750 MHz in case of Nitro Plus model, memory bus being 256 bit wide. Just as with the RX 480 Nitro Plus model, the RX 470 Nitro Plus model also uses dual bearing fan system, as well as the Nitro Quick Connect feature, so you can easily remove them in case you need to clean them from dust or even completely replace them. They are also using the Nitro Cool Tech technology, which basically turns the fans off when the GPU temperature is under 52 degrees Celsius, or to simply put it, while the card is not under significant load. Overall, the Sapphire's Nitro Plus series is really good looking, especially with this cool dot surface pattern, which almost has a rubberized feel to it, although the whole outer shroud is basically plastic. Backside reveals one of the best looking metal backplate in my opinion, which beside that makes the card more rigid and bumps up the heat dissipation properties, while on the side of the card you will see the Sapphire's RGB logo, which can, beside the softer control, be harder controlled by this little red LED mode switch button, and right next to it you can also see the V BIOS switch with which you can toggle between two different BIOS, one of which has a bit slower GPU clock speed and less aggressive fan and power profile. Going to the back end of the card, you will come across on the one 8-pin PC Express power connector, while opposite of that, on the other side, you will find your video outputs, two HDMIs, two display ports, and one DVI-D. Multi-GPU crossfire setup is also supported, and thanks to the latest AMD's GCN architecture, you don't have to use any kind of bridge connection, just put the second graphics card into the PCI Express slot, enable crossfire in the control panel of the drivers, and that's about it. Putting the card onto my testing rig and turning everything on, first thing I did was to find the card's maximum overclocking speeds for the GPU and memory using the Sapphire Strix 3.0 software. Up there you will get control over the GPU voltage alongside some other usual things like the power limit, fan speed, hardware monitor and so on. While the Nitro Glow function for controlling the Sapphire's RGB logo is still on the way, so for now you can only control it using that button switch that I've showed you earlier. 
Anyways, I've managed to get 1420 MHz for the GPU clock speed, which is quite a decent jump from the default 1260 MHz, while the memory was hanging in at 1855 MHz, which is around 100 MHz more than the car's default value. After everything being set and done overclocking wise, I went in to check out the performance of the car so I can get a better insight on how strong the RX 470 series actually is. As you can see in terms of 1080p gaming, it's more than capable of bringing in high FPS gameplay even at maxed out settings, which is something that AMD particularly stressed out. Vulkan API performance in Doom is really impressive, where the card easily reached 100 FPS and even more in certain scenes. My 21x9 1440p resolution was a little too much for it, but the 16x9 1440p resolution shouldn't be that big of a problem, even at high graphical settings. Having a smaller TDP, the RX 470 obviously runs cooler and quieter, the target temperature is about the same as with the RX 480 Nitro Plus version, around 76 degrees Celsius, but the speed at which fans ran was much smaller, around 1200 to 1400 RPMs in Fermax stress test, and that's around 30 to 35% of maximum fan speed. In games that was mostly around 74 to 75 degrees Celsius, while RPM range was going between 1200 to 1300 RPMs around 30% of the maximum fan speed. If that temperature is still high for you, and granted it kinda is compared to the reference cooler design, you can always adjust the fan curve and bring the temperature down a bit. Idle GPU temperature on an open test bed was around 50 degrees Celsius, which is just on the verge of fans turning on, so most likely in a chassis it will be just above that, and in that case they will probably be on most of the time, possibly not if you have a well ventilated chassis. Being a semi-passive model, the graphics card was expectedly dead silent in idle since fans are completely off, while in full load it was really quiet, especially compared to the RX 480 Nitro Plus model. The only problem I had, and that was an isolated issue in my case, is that the second fan emitted unusual noise. I would say that that was fan bearing related, you will probably hear it just a bit in this recording, but don't be too worried about that. As I said, this is probably an isolated issue, possibly it got damaged in shipping, but on the other hand, this is a a sample and not a retail product, so issue like this one is possible. All in all, I was really pleased to see what can the RX 470 series do performance-wise, especially coupled together with this Sapphire's Nitro Plus cooler design. The only problem that we have to face right now is the fact that the pricing is still up there, especially compared to the 4GB version of the RX 480, it's just too close to it as of now. As for now, I would either buy the RX 480 as it represents a better value, or I would wait for the RX 470 prices to come down. That's it guys for this time, thank you once again for checking out the unboxing and review of the Sapphire's RX 470 Nitro Plus graphics card. Feel free to give this video a thumbs up if you like it, leave a comment down below if you have any questions about the product, and of course if you would like to see more content like this you can subscribe to the Tech Tick YouTube channel, or you can just check out some of the other videos from before.